Dear students, welcome to EPG Parshala. In this module, we will be discussing about the groundwater hydrology. The main aim of this module is to understand groundwater concept, its significance and occurrence around the globe, to gain knowledge about different generic types of water, to understand the basic concept of geological formations of aquifers, its parameters and its importance to understand the basic fundamentals of groundwater flow and to gain knowledge about Darcy law, its significance and associated limitations. So first of all, we will discuss what is groundwater hydrology. Groundwater hydrology is a branch of hydrology that deals with the existence, movement and quality of underground water beneath the earth's surface. As per the US National Research Council 1991, Hydrology is defined as the science that treats the water of the earth and their occurrence, circulation and distribution, their physical and chemical properties and their reaction with the environment, including their relation to living things. The entire living world of our planet, that is the plants, animals and human beings depend upon water for their survival. Water present beneath the land surface is counted as surface water or underground water, which is usually differentiated into two different zones, saturated zone and unsaturated zone as shown in this figure. Some facts about groundwater. Water is most widely occurring substance on earth. However, only 2.8% of total water resources exist as fresh water. The biggest portion of fresh water remains locked in glaciers and icebergs or lies in deep underground aquifers. Out of this 2.8%, about 0.6% is available as groundwater and only 0.3% can be extracted economically with the present drilling technologies. The unseen oceans of fresh water beneath the earth's surface makes about 35 times the available water in lakes and streams at any time. The available groundwater for human consumption generally occurs within 800 meters from the earth surface. Now the classification of water with reference to its origin. Most of the water resources are segregated into different generic types on the basis of their origin and occurrence which are described as under. Magnetic water, the occurrence of water within and in equilibrium with a magma or water rich volatile fluids derived from a magma contributes to magmatic water. The term plutonic water is applied where the separation is deep while water from shallow depths called volcanic water, juvenile water. The, this form of water is also known as new water which has not been introduced to hydrosphere previously. Meteoric water. Most of the meteoric water is as a resultant of different forms of atmospheric precipitation, usually a part of present day hydrological cycle. This resource facilitates the water available in lakes, rivers, streams, wells and ice melts, which originates directly or indirectly from the precipitation. Connet water. The water retained in ancient aquifers encountered as great depth in sedimentary rocks, either through marine or fresh water in origin, contributes to connet water. Then metamorphic water. This term is used for water associated with hydrous rocks like micas, clay, etc. during the process of metamorphism. This figure shows how these different kind of waters are interrelated to each other. Hydrological budget. The global hydrological cycle maintains the continuous churning of water on, above and below the earth's surface, supporting several life form on this planet. The system can be subdivided usually into three different subsystems, atmospheric water system, surface water system and subsurface water system. The atmospheric system includes precipitation, evaporation, interception and transpiration. Surface water system includes overhead flow, surface runoff 
and run off to streams, seas and oceans. The subsurface water system includes infiltration, subsurface flow and groundwater recharge and groundwater flow. Under normal conditions, the travel time of groundwater can varies from less than a day to more than a million years. The hydrological budget is very important and includes inflows, outflows and storage of water as shown in the following equations. Rock properties affecting groundwater. Different hydraulic properties of rock and soil including porosity, soil classification and specific surface have a considerable role towards controlling occurrence, availability and flow of groundwater. Soil classification. The amount of groundwater recharge, storage, discharge and the extent of groundwater contamination depends on the soil properties like texture, porosity, specific yield, permeability and filtering capacity. Specific surface and specific yield. The surface area depends on particle size, shape and mineral types and generally refers to the area per unit weight of the material. Specific yield is the ratio of volume of water that could drain out from saturated rock to the total volume of rock. Now porosity. The soil or rock fractions occupied spaces between the grains which serve as space for the existence of groundwater. These such openings are of great interest of hydrologists. The openings of rocks act as a reservoir of groundwater. Now permeability. The rock particles, fracture size and shape plays an important role in determining the porosity and permeability, which in turn regulate the aquifer characteristics and hydraulic conductivity of groundwater. The permeability is the parameter which determines the ability of water transmission and movement and facilitate availability of water for human consumption. Now we will discuss about aquifers. The word aquifer originates from a combination of two Latin words equi which means water and afro which means to bear. Lawman in 1972 elaborates aquifers as geological formations which contain saturated permeable material that could yield sufficient quantity of water to ensure availability of water in well and springs. Aquifer classification. Aquifers can be classified depending upon the structure, texture, lithology and mobility of water based. Type of aquifer based on mobility of water based. Equitard. The term equitard originates from the combination of two Latin word equa which means water and tardo which means slow down or hinders. Equitard represents the water saturated geological structures and confounding it to behave like resource for water supply. Equiclude. Equiclude like other terms also originated from Latin words Aqua means water and cloudo means confines or inaccessible. An equiclude is solid, impermeable but porous structure underlying an aquifer. It defines as a water saturated geological unit that is incapable of transmitting significant quantities of water under ordinary hydraulic gradient. Now equifuse. Equifuse represents relatively impermeable structures which do not have any interconnected openings and neither store water nor exchange or transmit water with other aquifers. The word equifuse is coined from combination of two Latin word including aqua which means water and fuge which means drive away. Types of aquifer based on structure. Confined aquifer. Confined aquifer or artesian aquifer or pressure aquifers are the water saturated geological formation sandwiched between imprevious or semi previous unsaturated zone at pressure greater than atmospheric pressure. This pressure may sometimes result to rise in water level above or surface in wells. 
these aquifers are characterized with low groundwater circulation intensity, very large storage and inadequate replenishments. This figure shows about confined aquifers. The water balance in confined aquifers can be represented through the equation described below considering negligible replenishment or recharge or loss through evaporation in one day period. Unconfined aquifers are aquifers with water saturated geological formations which is overlain by the free permeable unsaturated zone at the upper boundary of the aquifer. The pressure of water in the unconfined aquifer is equal to the atmospheric pressure and upper groundwater surface is recognized as water table which is free to rise and fall. Water does not rise above the water table in such aquifers. However, depth to the water table remain variable under various geological factors like topography, geology, season and tidal effects and the quantities of groundwater being extracted from the saturated zone. This figure shows about the unconfined aquifers. Perched aquifers are some special kind of unconfined aquifers where a small number of aquitard exist between earth surface and water table. The water balance in unconfined aquifers can be demonstrated with the equation given below. Leaky aquifers. These two diagrams shows about the leaky aquifers. In the first diagram, you can see that the aquifer is surrounded by aquitard on the above and aquiclude at the bottom. And in the second diagram, it is clear that the aquifer have underlain aquitard, then there is another aquifer and then there is aquiclude under that an second aquifer. Multi-layered aquifers, hydraulically single aquifer exist infrequently in nature. Aquifer is a part of multiple aquifers which are arranged in a system. The movement of groundwater in such multi-layered aquifer system is much